Hello everyone and welcome to WWE 2K23 My GM Mode. This is the second time I'm doing this recording because my I always have tech issues of some kind, just in various forms. Uh anyway, we're here with my GM once again, and I'm excited because you know me, or maybe you don't, if you're new to the channel, I have covered SmackDown vs. Raw 2006, 07, 08 GM mode, and I also did a series on 2K22, my GM, last year. Um, I was not able to finish it, looking to, you know, follow through on this one, and I think it'll be a bit easier because, you know, bunch of new features this year. Last year's mode, it was a good base, it was a good foundation, and they're starting to build on it a little more. I think next year it'll be even better. Um, but even with last year being kind of bare bones, I still played a lot of GM uh, because I just love this mode. And I think there's some cool new additions, like the fact that Tyler Breeze and Xavier Woods from Up Up Down Down are included as GMs and they have their own unique perks. I think that's a nice touch. Um, the cheat code ability, uh, the ability to just steal somebody from another roster, um, I think that works both for like a gameplay perspective, but also, you know, for a content creator like me, it kind of offers the chance for some unique story potential. Um, I remember like Kurt Angle being a traitor in uh, one of my older series and jump and ship. Tyler Breeze as well, quick recovery, um, you know, immediate boost to all, uh, to, or I can't speak, immediate 20, see, I, I did this commentary before and now I'm all thrown off. Um, but yeah, quick recovery, it's a good ability. Kurt Angle as well, uh, Heart of Gold, also a useful ability. And another new addition, Eric Bischoff, he's back. And backstage booking, also a pretty cool perk as well. Um, Cactus Jacked for Mick Foley as well. You can just injure two superstars on the next show or on someone else's show. Um, and of course, Legend Whisperer, the perk that went to William Regal last year. Now, if you have a custom superstar, that's still around. Of course, Sonya, Adam Pierce, Stephanie McMahon, they're still here. I'm gonna go with Tyler Breeze and I'm gonna go with SmackDown. Um, last year, I feel kind of goofy for not recognizing that the Birth of Legends perk is a reference to the SmackDown 6 um, from you know the early 2000s. It, it, it's right there in front of me and I didn't catch it. I feel silly. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna do what I did last time. We're gonna have Kurt Angle book Monday Night Raw. That that ability though, for the three randomly selected superstars not able to compete in a match next week, that's brutal. Um, hopefully they use it on Eric Bischoff and not me, because I'm gonna have Eric Bischoff book NXT. Um, also some interesting new abilities, reducing the price of the next three free agents you purchase this week by 50%. That is a huge deal. So if you want to play as NXT 2.0, that's a really good perk. Um, WCW feels like that's a very WCW ability. Extend the duration of all your Legends contracts by five weeks. But uh, we're going to go with NXT, Raw, SmackDown, NXT. Going to go the old SmackDown vs. Raw 2008 setup with the three brands. I'm not going to go for four. I don't want to go all in on the difficulty on myself just yet. Um, AI difficulty and game difficulty being different settings, I think is interesting. Um, I'm gonna go hard AI, but the game difficulty, I'm gonna leave it normal. Because again, I don't wanna completely stack the deck against myself. Snake Order, just like in the old SmackDown vs. Raw games, I think that's, I kinda like that better as a draft order because it kinda gives, e it's kind of an even spread across what however many shows you have. Um, and then opening budget, you wanna go max because like, one problem that I had with last year's mode is that you kind of started off with a pretty small roster, or if you tried to spend all your budget in the draft, then the problem then was that you didn't have enough money really to spend on, you know, different perks and match stipulations and whatnot. So I feel like going max budget is pretty much always going to be the call for me. I have a custom draft pool already set up. Um, wait, is it selected? Yeah, okay. Um, basically just like, you know, uh, enabling some people, and, um, I didn't make too many changes. Uh, shakeups we're gonna leave on, auto-draft off, I wanna be able to pick my own superstars. Yeah, gonna try to remember all the points that I said previously, um, you know, <sighs> this being the first episode, I wanna come out strong, but I'm, I'm gonna push through it, you know? Um, 
gonna go ahead and pick Cody Rhodes with the, oh, but Asuka, I feel like I want both of them, but I feel like one of them is gonna get picked. Oh no, I, uh, I, I, I gotta go with Asuka. You know, I drafted Cody in my first round of this, but um, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna get him. Nope, there we go, of course. Uh, disappointing, but you know, what can you do? Hopefully uh, this time I can get a bit of a better roster because last time I think it was a bit, bit kind of a wonky roster. But also like, you know, you see already with the snake order, um, that's four people off the board. So what I also like as part of like a strategy element with this is that um, you really, like, there are a lot of people you're not going to be able to get straight out of the draft. And, you know, w with it just being two players, I feel like you had a pretty clear idea of who you were going to get. This, um, I like this as a little extra uh, challenge to the game. Um, Asuka, Bianca, yeah, I feel like I got to get both of them. I like both of them. Um, and then... Yeah, uh, what I was also gonna say that I said in the previous commentary, I'm just trying to remember everything I said. Uh, you know what, just keep going for the women. Shayna Baszler, why not? Um, the uh, thing I also like about being able to play as three shows compared to um, SmackDown vs. Raw 2008, the problem with that game was always that the roster wasn't deep enough, and you didn't really have the option to turn off the other show. So it was like, you'd have two shows that you could like compete against, but the roster was never like in depth enough. So it always felt like you were kind of shorthanded. And so um, in this game, you know, the modern rosters are much more, like there's much more people you can choose from. You can even add in legends too, if you want. So um, I think that's gonna make this uh, pretty exciting. Uh, I'm gonna go with Dolph Ziggler. You know, my first male pick, I maybe could go stronger, but I've always been a fan of Dolph. Uh, especially if you've seen my old Universe Mode series. Dolph Ziggler was a guy who I definitely featured quite a bit. Um, and I'm also going to go for Shinsuke Nakamura. I'm a big fan of Nakamura. Um, but yeah, like comparing this year to some of the older games, but also comparing it to last year, I think there's like... I'm just so excited to play this game because I really liked the foundation that they laid out last year with the different class synergies and um, you get the power cards and stuff. I think there's a lot of new details in the foundation that they laid out last year that weren't in the old games and I think makes it a lot more exciting. Um, but at the same time last year, it was a bit bare bones. So uh, I'm really excited to play through what'll feel like a more fleshed out uh, mode. I think I'm gonna go with Seamus. You know, he's got class synergy with Nakamura. So that's a potential rivalry I could do right out of the gate. Um, Oh, I could get Gunther. I gotta get Gunther. He wasn't in the, the draft class I did last time. Um, but also at the same time, you know, when you're playing this game, the classes can definitely give you a bonus, but if you do the rivalries right, you're not necessarily beholden to it either. So I think that's also like a really interesting system to play with. Just like uh, overall, there's a lot of things that I'm really excited about, especially, you know, going with this mode moving forward and they'll have more opportunities to really build on it and flesh it out even more. Like, I'm really excited to see what they come up with next year on top of all of this. Uh, you know, let's get a veteran in there. Let's get Shelton Benjamin. I think he's got class energy with Gunther and he's a baby face. Um, mm, Montez Ford would be a good pick. Uh, okay, wait, so I've got Asuka who is a fighter. Rhea Ripley's a bruiser, but Bianca's a bruiser. And Shayna's also a bruiser, so I don't want to get Rhea. Um, probably getting another fighter in there. Let me take a gander. So I could get Carmella. I could get Alba Fire, which I'm assuming is NXT. Uh, I did, I, at least this year compared to last year, I follow WWE a bit more. Um, not so much NXT, though. Uh, yeah, let's go Carmella. Why not? You know, I liked her appearance in the Elimination Chamber. I thought the whole thing... The dynamic she had with Asuka in that match was fun. So I think there could be something we could work with there. But yeah, we're already in round 10 and you can quickly see, um, yeah, just by adding in more shows, so many of these people are off the board and you really have to, like, you're not going to get everybody who you want to pick. And I think that's a really interesting kind of, um, like, a little extra challenge. But also, because, like, with a higher budget, if you don't get everybody that you want in the draft, 
Well, that's okay, because not everybody is available even in the WWE draft. So you could potentially just jump right into free agency and get some people. And um, yeah, I just think there's a lot, a lot of interesting, um, yeah, a lot of interesting things to consider with this newer iteration of my GM. And so I'm definitely excited to, um, oh, wait, hold on. So he's a heel. I do have Shelton Benjamin. I, I want no Amdar. That that's a selfish pick on my part, but I. It's also he didn't cost that much, you know. So we can build him up over time. And I definitely want to watch my budget, because like I said, could keep my eyes out in free agency. And if I hold on to a little bit of that, then um, you know, got got some room to play with. You know, could get a few more women on the roster to fill it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick up Liv Morgan with my next pick. And I th I'm thinking I'm only going to get, like, one or two more people. Because I want to have, like, a good, like, seven, eight hundred thousand budget to play with. Um, uh, if, if I get the same condition that I had in the first season, um, there's one where it's, like, if you have three hundred thousand, uh, like, immediately you can just get a, get a, um, one of your, like, uh, seasonal challenges right off the bat. Although it's not, I don't think it's guaranteed that I'll get that. And because I picked up Liv Morgan, so as far as Giants go, I could get Tamina, I could get Raquel. Um, you know, I could always turn one of them heel, so I think I'm gonna pick up Raquel. She's a bit of a cheaper option. And that puts me at 12 superstars. Now I'm at about 800,000. Um, gonna take a quick look at my classes and make sure I've got the matchups I want. So we've got Nakamura, who can pair up with Sheamus. We could pair up Shelton or Noam Dar with Gunther, potentially. Um, Dolph Ziggler's a specialist, so he could kind of go up against anybody. And we got six men, six women. Uh, I think, like, you know, Bailey could be fun to go with. Let me take a look at the women as well. So Bianca is a bruiser. Shayna's a bruiser. So, yeah, we got cruisers and giants, bruisers and fighters but I don't have a, a specialist for the women. So I think I will go ahead and, well, let me take one quick look at the specialists. Yeah, so it's pretty much I could get Bailey or I could get some lower level talents, but I'm gonna go with Bailey. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do any more. I'm definitely stopping at round 13. Uh, Cause this is even a little lower of a budget than I was aiming for. But still, I think 500,000 will be a good number to play with. They've gone all the way up through round 14. I'm going to end the draft right here for me. So here's a good look, a good snapshot at our roster page. I'm so disappointed, though, that it's kind of like, um, who was it? Tommy Dreamer was the ECW GM in 08. And so I don't think Tyler Breeze is an option you can draft. I'm also not sure if Xavier Woods is. Um, I'll have to keep an eye on that. Or maybe someone can point it out in the comments. Uh, they're gonna keep going into round 15. Raw does not have any budget left over. So they've got 15 talents off the bat. 16 for NXT, okay. Wow, yeah, so they went all the way down on their budget. So we're already, um, in a budget sense, we're starting off on a better foot than they are. And there you see Eric Bischoff's NXT. So yeah, like because there's three different, um, when, whenever you do like one-on-one -on -one in my GM, I feel like sometimes the the AI can have some weird draft picks, but um, with there being three shows and we had kind of the AI difficulty cranked up, I feel like this is a pretty even spread of talent. Um, I think even more so than the first time that I tried to record this, I think I have a bit of a better roster than I had that time. But like you see in NXT, they got Ronda Rousey, Cody Rhodes, Becky Lynch, Rey Mysterio, AJ Orton. So quite a few big names there. Raw's got Charlotte. Oh, Bobby Roode's their biggest. So, you know, Raw maybe could use a little bit of work. Um, and then, yeah, on SmackDown, I'm really happy with this roster, honestly. Hopefully, you know, my tech doesn't crash on me again and I can stick with this recording. Yeah, and here's another detail that I like. Again, kind of reminiscent of SmackDown vs. Raw 2008, where you had that GM of the year uh, kind of calculator. Um, oh, and interesting, the pay-per-view schedule also changes up because the last time I did this, it was SummerSlam that I had to go to first, but this time it's Extreme Rules. Okay, I was born for this. 
Are we only getting trash talk from Kurt Angle? Is Bischoff not gonna not gonna talk some smack? Obviously, with the likes of Drew McIntyre on our books, we think. Oh, maybe I I must have missed that. I must not have scrolled up high enough. All right, moment of truth. We got champions. I'll get back to my thought in a moment. Yeah, so I feel like this is an even distribution of popularity. We don't really have like a big Roman Reigns type name, but we've got all people who I think realistically, you know, I mean like Sheamus has been a uh, WWE champion before. Gunther will be. I'll be surprised if he doesn't with his performance in the Rumble. Nakamura's fought for it. Ziggler's been world champ. I could go real uh, dark horse and give it to Shelton, but I don't think that's quite uh, what I have in mind. I think, let's give it to Ziggler, you know? I don't have a Kevin Owens. Cesaro's not in the game this year because he's in AEW. So I feel like of all of my guys, I feel like Dolph Ziggler is kind of the one who's here. And then when it comes to the women, do I put it on Asuka and boost her straight to 73? I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna put it on Asuka. Well, or do I wanna put it on Bianca? Cause Bianca's also really good. Let's go with Bianca actually. Let's give let's give Asuka the potential to fight for it. Uh, Commissioner Goal scheduled a run in this week. Anyway, uh, going back to the Hall of Fame trophy. Uh, you kind of had the 100% like progress bar for GM of the year in SmackDown vs. Raw 2008 where you would get it by, you know, completing achievements like this. But I think the difference between, like, just on a name perspective, I think Hall of Fame works better. Um, and also what I like about this is that you have, like, it encourages you to play through multiple seasons. I feel like whenever I would do the older games, I would always go through like one year of GM mode, and then that would kind of be it. Um, like I never really had the incentive to go further. But with some of these achievements, like, finish multiple seasons in first place, um, it, it you kind of have to if you want to get that Hall of Fame status. You know, it encourages you to keep going. And I like that because it's like, you know, it gives you a little bit more longevity. Um, even if you played with Max Weeks in last year's game, you know, I think I still kind of had the same feeling where it was like, I would do the one year and I'd be good there. Um, but what I also like is that there is another tier um, where it's like finish multiple seasons in second place or better. So even if you play through one season and you don't finish in first place, you can still kind of get a bit of a consolation prize, but also it doesn't put that same amount of pressure to be the best every year because you have multiple years where you can kind of make that back. Um, and I think that's another interesting detail. Otherwise, you know, earn a certain amount of money, uh, reach a certain amount of fans, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, what'll be the power card health spa three? Okay. Um, there are also different power cards, which I like. The bigger they are, uh, one randomly booked falls count anywhere match, uh, times two special effects cost, Oh, so that, okay, so that's a negative effect on someone else. Beginner's luck to raise the popularity of the superstar at the lowest popularity by 10. That is a card I like, but I don't know if I'll buy any of those right off the bat. Um, no, wait, what did I want to do? No, my power cards, that's right. Let's go ahead and determine our SmackDown 6. So it's going to be Bianca, Shinsuke, Shelton, Gunther, Raquel, and Asuka. I feel like that's pretty solid. I feel like that's a pretty solid group of six people to boost so right off the bat bianca 77 popularity you know she's we're definitely gonna have to make sure we book her in week one and um also as far as like multiple seasons the logistics um some of them you don't get until seasons in and uh i think that's cool another sort of like giving you incentive to play further and i love gm mode so um i'm gonna be playing this a lot <laughs> regardless uh, so I'm, that, that just makes me excited. And, um, yeah, I think that, that about does it for this episode. Apologies if it was a bit kind of frazzled. Um, like I said, I recorded this once before and it crashed. So <laughs> trying to make sure I get all the same points in that I said before. Anyway, uh, it, oh boy, that's that. Let me try that one again. Thank you for watching. Um, <laughs> I hope I haven't scared you off. Uh, see you in the next episode. I hope I'll see you in the future because I'm looking to do a lot of these videos. So uh, 
I'll catch you then.